Hi guys, I am Omena. I am currently a creative director at Front Matter, like Aruj mentioned. And I'm also a multidisciplinary designer and um, a pursuer of like fashion projects and arts in general. Uh, but in the design circles, I'm better known for my Urdu type work. And Urdu has long been a passion of mine. Um, and how it came together is very funny because it, it came together just because I was able to observe a pattern. I was able to observe it. I was able to create new patterns to develop and execute uh, another pattern and then also relearn and uh, some of the old patterns that I had forgotten. So for context, I'll take you a couple of years back, eight years back to 2016. Um, I'll paint you a picture. A 40 minute commute, an overcrowded vans, and a honey swing dominated flavish, and also the same landscape on repeat twice a day. As you can imagine, uh, it's hard to miss out on the landscape, especially if like me, you were intent on avoiding a uh, small dog, and you, you'd rather like spend most of your time staring out the window than making socially awkward conversation. Um, that's where my entire like journey with OD typography began because the first thing that I noticed were the sign words. And it was not unsurprising because I had always been passionate about typography. Uh, it was just like chai for me. Like even though I could recognize the good and the bad, I could not really avoid it or put it down. Um, in 2016, I was at a time where I would download scenes and every font that came across me. And I had even made an attempt to make Comic Sans better. Um, didn't get much love over there. But back to the signboards, I think it's not unsurprising again that something that I've been tough on was uh, Urdu, right? Because Urdu is our natural language, it remains the language in which which the masses in Pakistan recognize. So what bothered me was not the use of Urdu, but the lack of it, uh, the lack of the use of Urdu that was being taught. Like we didn't see it in our design curriculum, even though we had covered like a whole lot of marketing deliverables. We did not use it or practice it in our projects, which was very odd for me. And it just kept me thinking, okay, how can we change that? And so uh, I took it upon myself to do some research. Uh, how many people over here know the Urdu alphabets, Alice base, in order by heart? You know what? You know what? You know it in reverse while? I think a lot of people might know it better in reverse than in the actual like format. But that's okay. I was the same, right? So back in 2016, it hadn't been seen ages since I had like read Urdu and worked with Urdu. Um, so I did some research on my end and um, I saw that they were like, obviously there were hundreds and hundreds of English ones, really good ones. There were some really great Arabic ones, but there were just not enough Urdu fonts. They were even like just the basic two or three that you see around. And even on those fonts, there was not much innovation. Like, you know, with English fonts, when you look at English fonts, you get like this diverse range of amazing display fonts and sans serifs and serifs. And there is a font that you can use in every place. But for Urdu, you just have a Nasini or you have a couple of other ones that are very dedicated to soft fills as well. You'll find them in, in ink page, but you won't find the same um, fonts in the software that we use as designers, right? So you want, uh, and even like, I don't know if it's sort of better, but back in 2016, it was a whole like ordeal to actually type out of the font in Illustrator. You had to go through like Photoshop and whatnot. It was complicated. Um, anyway, the point was that I started wondering what I could do about it. And I didn't want to make a huge difference. This was just like a very personal project for me to explore my own personal boundaries for design. Um, I started with the very basics, learning the Alif Bay. Um, it was very complicated. And the only way that I could recall them was in a very sing-song manner, the way my baby sister had just like recently learned it. 
Um, and to this day, I think that's the only way I can recall the complete Urdu alphabet. Um, apart from that, I just like bugged my amma entirely like, all the time. I would go to her and ask her to, how to write this word and that word. Whether it's going to be the Kenji wala kaf or the Kamri wala kaf. Um, Urdu is like a very complicated language. It's not like English. Even in like in writing and design, there's a lot of way it connects. Uh, and each connection is different, right? The way Vau would connect with Soim would be very different from another letter that connects with Toy. So it's, it's, it's more complicated that thing than English in that manner. So uh, when I started with it, it was just absolute chaos. Like I did not know where to begin and what, how to like organize my workflow. There was just so much to do and um, obviously I was studying at that time. There was projects to be done. So I had to carve out time to work on this project. Um, but eventually I did get the hand of it. So eventually I did realize that, um, okay, what are the jewels and tours? How do I connect? What are the patterns that I need to take? What are the patterns that I need to make? And then the patterns that I need to break, right? Um, and for me, it took some time, like it took three to four weeks to actually get the hang of Urdu to have like the Urdu alphabets on the tip of my tongue to explore, to be able to like explore those quorums, to be able to explore uh, the very complicated Jor tours and just like putting something that was re reasonably good out there, right? And um, a lot of my initial inspiration, it came from like existing fonts, pre-existing fonts. So what I would do is my pattern was that I would take a font and deconstruct it. Uh, or I would say it's like an Arabic font. And if you are familiar with Arabic fonts, they don't have the complete set of haroofs that we have in Hood. So they're lacking. So a lot of the time I would have to create a missing haroof uh, or I would just for the sake of like personalizing the design, I would like completely deconstruct it. Um, I would start with like very basic geometric shapes. I would try organic and I was like, I was not good at manual work. At that time, I, I did my all my work digitally. Um, so it was very challenging in itself as well. Yes, how do we represent these uh, shapes in a digital space? You're not familiar with how that moves, right? And I was really curious, Kate, how can we explore for those beyond the traditional aesthetic medium that we have, which is silly to be, right? Uh, beyond calligraphy in 2016, you didn't see much of Urdu stylization. And that was where I was getting stuck because calligraphy is a very like handheld medium. There's a flow to it that you can establish. I was not good at the uh, traditional medium, the flows. I, I was like a digital person. So eventually I did get the hang of it. Uh, I, like I said, I started with geometric shapes, deconstructing type, and three, four weeks down the line, I was just good at it. I had the Urdu alphabets at the tip of my tongue. I could relate forms in their like uh, distinguish like different alphabets uh, from Urdu, and it was just it just started becoming a very enjoyable journey for me to do. Um, the whole of Urdu project is really, really close to my heart because uh, it's something that helped me develop certain patterns, not just with like my, this oh, creative endeavor in Urdu, but also with like all of the one other words that I do. Um, for me, Urdu, this entire project is close because it also made, made a huge impact. In 2016, when you were like looking for inspiration online, there was nothing that you could find. There were a couple of people who were, who were working on Urdu typography at that time, but it was, it was not like very well known and I really, I did discover them, but I discovered them down the line when, you know, like Instagram was common and there was like a creative space, a creative culture that was going over there. However, like if you look at Odoo typography in this stage and time, if you click on Pinterest and you search for Odoo typography, you will find really good examples. If you look through Instagram, you will find like people doing great, great work in there. But for me, like the importance of this entire project came from the fact that 
I established some really good patterns in my creative work. So, like I said, not just in this one, but in, in this like entire project, but also with like my personal work, right? That I do my day job. So that is very important. Like as because we live in a digital space and where time is really short, expectations are really high, and you really need to get out work really fast, right? It's not a buzz. A lot of the time you feel like quality is getting compromised, especially if you guys work in marketing, you wouldn't be familiar with the fact that, you know, there's always like side timelines, the expectations are very high. And obviously like data work is not easy, guys. It's hard. And creativity is not linear. We definitely keep running into creative blocks. So the all uh, process that I went through with Urdu just gave me structure in my workflow. It helped me recognize patterns that I could replicate with any sort of work, right? Because I was spontaneously putting this sort of work out there. It helped me recognize the fact that those similar patterns I could incorporate in my work. And I'll give you like a couple of like really small examples that I keep mentioning to my creatives at work as well. Um, number one is just like you know having a checklist i think like urdu uh this urdu project game i uh, by the end of it i had this checklist in mind where you know when you are actively putting out work there's a lot of like mistakes that can happen and i learned the hard way there was like a lot of missed words missing nuksas wrong forms i would be using like the wrong alphabets when i had not che rechecked the thing so um i put together like a checklist of sorts which I had to go through. If I had to like publish my my work, I would go through that checklist. And to this day, whether I'm working on like a web page, whether I'm working on an ad, whether I'm working on a poster, whether I am reviewing work for a team dev, I tell them all the same things. I have had the checklist from 2017 that I go through. You need to check all this stuff before your work is passed off. It's a pattern that you need to develop yourself based on whatever work you do. And this is not just like significant to design itself. It also comes into play with all of the other um, jobs that we do. So any anywhere you are, if you develop like good patterns, good structure in your routine, it's going to actually make it very helpful and make it uh, very easy for you to do. Because a lot of the time when we're doing repeated work, we lose out on the details and miss out on the details. And that's why when you have these sort of patterns, when you have like a checklist that you know you want to go through, you will fix those up way earlier than your manager wants. And that's going to, that's going to say your ass, sorry. But yeah, so uh, apart from this, um, I think like another thing that I do want to highlight here uh, is the importance of creative side projects. As a creative, like I said, it's, and creativity is not linear. It's very difficult to maintain that level of energy throughout, especially if you have like a full-time job and then you are doing like some side work. However, it's very important that you do give some time to these projects. So I know that as uh, we all love like a good patterns, but what we keep missing out on is pattern is not just repetition. It's also, it ha also has like a rhythm and a pace to it, right? Patterns will not always replicate in the same manner. There is other variables in play. And that's what you need to incorporate in your uh, regular day-to-day -day life. Uh, if you're picking up a side project, you, you don't need to like work on it every single day. You don't need to work on it every single week either. You can set your own face and rhythm with it. And the only, um, only direction that you need to take is make sure that you're consistent with it. And that's going to build your pattern. So make sure that whatever you can commit to, you are doing it. Whether it's once a week, it's twice a week, it's twice a day, whatever suits you. And you will see that once you have that in place, you will see the difference that you are going to make. And yes, one thing then that I do want to highlight uh, is that when you start like a new fashion, there's a lot of chaos associated with it, right? And that can be very deciding. Chaos. I tried it this way, I tried it that way, it's not happening. Don't let that initial chaos confuse you or discourage you from just keep showing up, right? You have to show up if you want to maintain that pattern. 
And yes, there will be things that bring you down constantly. But again, it's just a matter of time. And, and when you look back, you'll see how much you have learned. And it's not learning is also not uh, directly proportional, right? It will not only happen for that particular instance. You will not just learn the same thing if, you, if you're you taking that up. You'll also learn a lot in discipline. You'll also learn a lot of other things that uh, you'll try out other mediums. And one thing can lead to the other. It's like, it's a butterfly effect, right? It's the smallest thing can lead to the lead to a bigger things. So, and I really, really encourage you to bring structure in your work and also like add creative endeavors to your um, to your regular journey, your creative journey. It's a very good way to clear your headspace, to have that, to maintain that creative flow. Where you know, we, when we are working in like creative jobs. It's very hard for us to maintain that day in and day out if you're working on ads, uh, it can just get so frustrating. I know. So it's good to have that space to carve out that time to really revisit uh, where your creativity comes from, what inspires you, and that's that starting is going to make all the difference. That's all. We can take questions. For God's sake, show something. <laughs> Guys, this is why I uh, this is why I put the cards out there. I hope you all have like gotten them. She's like not everybody got the cards. Yes. Um. So a lot of them are um. Some of them are written manually first, but most of my work is digital. So it all happens on the software itself, and it's not just like stumming from existing fonts. It's from fonts done from scratch. Oh, uh, I actually just use a trackpad. <laughs> I'm I'm not good with graphic tables, etc. Thank you. How do we achieve the perfection? Yeah, I think um, it's when you're working with like typography, something that is that helps me especially is if you if you take like geometric shapes, right? If there is uniformity, there your characters will be easier to um, easier to recognize. Uh, it, it differs from for each type of, so for some I will have like the entire uh, characters laid out, I will uh, make each and every character, but for some it's just like a blind jump. Just uh, you you start on it, you, you, you take it like a typical design, like you would illustrate a word, right? So you take it that way. So you won't really break it down, but you would treat the entire word as a face. I use Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. Actually, that is a major bona fide. The first font I did was a complete vector font, and the idea of that font came from blogs, right? Because, like I said, Urdu is very complicated, or Urdu ke saare jor tor jo hai na, wo different hote hain ek dusre pe, right? It's it's it gets very complicated when you're working on it. So the first one that I did was almost like in a block structure where it would be easier for you to take the, I, and I did like the complete faces and the half faces. So yeah, it was very easy to actually like join together, uh, join them together, but it was a vector font. I am currently working on a font that I want to make like really usable, but for that it's sort of like a lengthy process because I have to make sure that I have covered all my bases, I know how each letter connects, and we have those variables uh, variables available. Like it's almost like um, all the small glyphs that you need and the gators that you need. That what Urdu requires a lot. So I'm working on it. However, as because this is a side project, it takes a lot longer and it's harder to carve out the time for it. But inshallah, once I get there, it will be available for you guys. I think like um, and all the designers would relate that when you're working on say a poster, right? You need that sort of diversity. You need something that stands out. I think that is the one thing that draws us towards a lot of like different display fonts, right? You will try to look for the best possible font. If everything is in Helvetica, it's it's still not going to look good. It's not still going to hit that mark, right? So for although that's what's missing that. We can't, even though Nasli is a dintir font, if the entire piece is in Nasli, it won't stand out, which is the problem that I noticed with the signboard. Because one of them were in the same two fonts, it was hard to sort of like pick out and for them to stand out, which is a major marketing aspect, right? Uh, 
Oh, oh, we were really missing the mark on this because people cannot like recognize those fonts or it's just like too common and it proceeds into the background. I think there is some work that's um, going on in there and that's a fear as well. Like people are optimizing fonts for use like on your apps, on uh, that board, et cetera. Uh, my work is more um, on the visual design of things and I'd love to like expand to that side where I can really identify the the issues that users run into when they uh, when they're typing like long form especially. Uh, inshallah I'm hoping I get there, but for now my work is more like focused on the way can last night. Sorry? Three of them questions. Have you ever thought about monetizing it? And second, have you ever uh, did you make any attempts with core Arabic points? Um um okay monetizing the I think the only way I'm currently like monetizing it is just incorporating Furdu uh, in my regular like design projects. So I get a lot of requests for Urdu brand identities or like wedding invitations, like I mentioned. But so far, like I haven't like haven't really thought about or haven't really studied in how to monetize it. I know a lot of people are doing like small um, sewed bags and you know apparel lines, etc. But I have not ventured there. Um, to your second question, what was it to do? Just... Oh yeah, no, I have actually not done Arabic. I still feel like there's so much to do in the Urdu space. Uh, and Arabic key, like I said, there's already like very good resources available. There's like a lot of food Egyptian designers who work with typography, who are really great resources, and they have like, uh, they have done a really good experimental design in uh, Arabic. So I would like uh, recommend looking them up. I don't remember the names, they do, but if you reach out, I can uh, send you some sample pizza, Sundam. Yeah, but I don't want to shift focus of it right now. See, uh, already I, I feel like I'm doing it way less time than I used to. Um, and there, there's like so many projects like, you know, like greeting cards and the way we can monetize it and everything. So I, I don't really want to move the focus from Urdu. There's already been so much work being done in it. Arabic, like I don't think I need to go there because Urdu is where the focus needs to be for for us as Pakistanis, uh, as our national language is Urdu. I think this is where we need it. This is how we want to make it accessible for like our students, for anybody interested in arts, for any designers. That where the attention needs to be right now. I think like if Arabic or Quranic Quranic verses, ki thanks for lete na. Uh, it's tricky. I've done like a couple of posters like that. It's tricky because you have to be, you have to spend a lot more time on it. You have to be very mindful about it. There's religious connotations, there's meaning to those verses. So, usme jo just na jab design practice kare hota na, jab ab Urdu typography ke fir kam kare hota, there is a chance that things can be misread, right? Because uh, if the a complete free piece is not entirely it's fought out, it could be misread. Like fake could be misread as dwans, right? Likin, what you up Arabic mini custom because it's going to change the meaning. It's very tricky, that's why you have to be a training man, mindful of it. I have repeatedly gotten that before, you know, like this looks really great, but you can't really read it. So what's the point of it? I think like for me it's it's been an evolution. So when I started it was like clear cut words that and the idea behind it was that you you be able to read it. So yeah. But then as I went deeper into it, I started like really experimenting with, uh, with the shapes and fonts, right? So there was that ambiguity. And um, I think like, it was just like a journey for me, right? That I went through a phase where things were really complicated. And you know, with Instagram and its requirements, you have to do one by one square. So that thing did get complicated. And I did get a lot of that feedback that uh, they're not readable. But uh, for me, it, because it was like more of an experimental project to actually test out my boundaries. Uh, and that's why I keep calling it a fashion project because it was really personal to me, right? So uh, the idea was to test out my design limits and how I can sort of like extend Urdu in each different direction. There are so many, like when, even when you look at uh, English fonts, right? There's so many display fonts or like brutal typography, et cetera, those kind of things that 
you can't really decipher to be what exact words they are. So um, again, like this was an exploration phase where I was like testing out all sorts of things that, you know, there will be fonts that will be readable, there will be fonts that will not be readable. And um, all the complicated ones, they never made it into like complete fonts. There are, so there were like, I think six, seven fonts that I made like complete characters for and I reused them. But those, the complicated ones were the ones where I got stuck and those were the ones that I remember how I was saying that uh, some pieces I just treated as like a visual rather than like typography. Those were the complicated pieces because I was just treating it as a whole visual piece rather than uh, really breaking it down as typography. Okay. Uh, yeah, I basically got to a point where it was, I could relate, I could, it was so frustrating for me to write Urdu on like my laptop or, or anything that I, it was just easier for me to design the entire word rather than writing it out. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not really familiar with any such software. I know about InPage uh, that exists, but my mom, Amma is an Urdu teacher and what she does, it's, I just noticed it a couple of years back is that she would voice record things in Urdu and then email them to her so she's not like putting in all the effort of writing it down and she's like, you know, the voice recording thing is just doing it for her, you know, the voice typing app. So it will just do it for her and then she'll like take it onto uh, in page and then do some minor fixes. So that's one way to go about it, I guess. Okay, thank you so much, Jari. Thank you. <laughs>